In this video, I'm going to show how to tune your car with N75 Motorsports new tuning portal using an EK1 Pro tuning device. We'll begin with setting up an N75 customer portal account. Go to N75's website. Click on Menu in the upper left of the screen. Next, click on ECU File Tuning. Finally, click on the blue hyperlink, Customer Portal N75 Motorsports. You can also access the page directly by going to login.n75tuning.com. When you access the portal for the first time, you will need to register a new account. Click on the blue Register button. Enter your personal information, such as your name, email, phone number, and address. Next, select a password and agree to the terms and conditions. Finally, click on Register. Now that you have an account set up, you can log into the portal. The first thing that you'll see will be any important news posted by N75 that you may need to be aware of. To exit the news, click on the screen on either side of the news pop-up. Explore the portal to familiarize yourself with the different tabs. There are seven tabs located on the left side of the screen. The first tab is for the main dashboard screen. The second tab will show all the files associated with your account. The third tab is where you will upload data log files for N75 to review. The fourth tab is a vehicle performance data lookup feature. This will give you a look at what performance you can expect from different stage tunes loaded onto your car. The fifth tab is for any invoices that you've paid or need to be paid for tuning services. The sixth tab is a knowledge base that can help answer many common questions or issues. Finally, the last tab is a Bosch ECU search tool. Now that we've gone over N75's tuning portal, you'll need a tuning device such as an EK1 Mini 2 Plus or EK1 Pro to write tunes to your vehicle. I'll be using an EK1 Pro in this video. You can purchase either EK1 device from N75. When purchasing an EK1 device from N75, you can add tune files and spark plugs on the same order screen. After you purchase the EK1 device, you will receive a link for the EK1 device's PC update software. Download the software so that you will have it ready when you receive your device. If you purchase the EK1 Pro, you will get the EK1 device, OBD cable, two USB cables, an SD card, a 4-in-1 USB SD card adapter, and two magnetic mounts. One mount is for the EK1, and the other can be used for a cell phone. As far as mounting the EK1 Pro, it comes with two options. One is a surface mount, and the other is a swivel mount. Both are magnetic. I found the Veloster N needed a different type of mount than what came with the kit. Most cars won't have this issue. I used a Tesla-style magnetic cell phone mount that I had used previously in my Elantra N to mount the EK1 Pro 2. This cell phone mount attaches behind the infotainment screen. This type of mount allows me to install the EK1 between the infotainment screen and gauge cluster. The EK1 is easy to read and reach for the driver. An EK1 device does not have to be permanently installed in your vehicle, but if you purchase the EK1 Pro, I would highly recommend hardwiring it into the car due to all its useful functionality and full color gauges. To hardwire the EK1, you will need to hook up the blue wire that is coming off the OBD wire harness. I recommend attaching a Micro 2 fuse tab. This will allow you to install the blue wire into the fuse box properly. To install the fuse tab, crimp the tab onto the blue wire. Optionally, you can wrap the wire in electrical or Tessa tape. Next, plug the blue wire into the fuse that only has power when the vehicle is turned on. For the Veloster N, I use the power outlet 20 amp fuse. The EK1 will power on when the car is turned on and then power off when the car is turned off. There will be a short delay after the car is turned off before the EK1 will power off. Finally, plug the OBD2 wire harness into the OBD2 port. 
Now the other end of the OBD2 cable is a mini USB. The mini USB needs to be ran to the EK1 Pro. I found running the wire under the steering wheel and up the right side of the steering wheel to the EK1 was the best route. To keep the wire clean, zip tie the wire under the steering wheel. With the EK1 installed in the car, we need to get it set up before we can load a tune file onto the car. The next step is very important. Some vehicles require you to read your ECU and some require you to simply read the ECU ID. Either type will save a file to the EK1's map folder. If this step is not performed correctly, you could lock your vehicle's ECU. If you have any questions about the next step, email N75's customer service at cs at n75tuning.com for help determining whether you should select Read ECU or ECU ID. For specific vehicles like the 2024 or newer Elantra Ns, you will need a bench flash kit for the EK1. This is due to changes made to the ECU by Hyundai. This kit is not included with the EK1. Turn the car on, but do not start the car. On the EK1, click on Power Mode, located in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Next, click on Read ECU ID. For Hyundai N vehicles, do not click on Reading ECU. The Veloster N uses a Simmons SIM 2K250 ECU. Next, click OK. If you don't know what type of ECU your vehicle has, you can use N75's ECU checker on the tuning portal. After you click OK, the EK1 will scan the ECU for its ID. The ID you need will be called Application Data ID. Write down or take a picture of the ECU ID. You will need this information when submitting files to N75 through the portal. Log in to your N75 tuning account. Go to the Upload tab. From the top drop-down boxes, select your vehicle. Next, select ECU file. Under that, enter your VIN, ECU ID, EK1 ID, and order number. Select what type of transmission your vehicle has. Select the type of tuning device that you're using. Agree to the terms and conditions. Finally, upload the ECU file and click Next. You can get the file from the EK1's SD card. Remove the SD card from the EK1, insert it in the included SD card reader, and plug the SD card reader into your computer. Look in the Maps folder on the SD card and move the file onto your computer's desktop. Then, simply drag and drop the file into the file box on the portal. This will take you on to the tuning options. Select which tune you want based on the modifications you have on your car. The tunes are displayed in stages, a description of what modifications are required under each stage. After you decide on what stage you want, an options box will appear. This allows you to select options that are possible with your tune, such as adding flames or E85 tuning. Finally, there is a comment box for special notes or request. When finished, Click on the Submit button to send your tune request to N75. The request will be displayed under the Files tab with a pending status. While you're waiting on your new tune file, you need to load a boot patch file onto your car. You'll either need to download a boot patch file from EK1 Tuning, or you may request one from N75. If you want to download the file from EK1 Tuning, go to their website create an account, and then download the boot patch file from their database. To get the boot patch file, hover over File DB, then click on New ECU Patch. Click on your vehicle at the top of the screen. Find the patch file listed for your ECU ID. Click on the file to download it. Before the file will begin its download, you will be asked to enter your EK1 serial number and the last six digits of your vehicle's VIN. You can also download a factory restore file from this site as well. The process is the same as the boot patch file. Hover over File DB and click on Original Files. Click on your vehicle's manufacturer. Then look through the list for your model and ECU ID. Download the file. You can transfer the file into your maps folder on the EK1's SD card. It will allow you to tune your vehicle back to stock if you need to.
With the boot patch file downloaded, you'll need to save the file in the EK1's map folder. Insert the SD card back into EK1. Plug the EK1 into your car. Turn the car on by hitting the start button twice with your foot off the brake. You do not want to start the car. On the EK1, select Power Mode, Writing ECU, select the patch file, allow the boot patch file to load onto your car. This process can take about 15 minutes. Do not interrupt the process. Once the boot patch file has been installed, the car is ready for tuning. After you send your vehicle's information, along with your tuning request through the portal, you'll receive notification a base tune file, based on your vehicle's modification, is ready. Log back into your N75 tuning portal. Go to Files. You'll notice that the file status has changed to Returned. Click on View. Download the new file. The base tune file will be what you need to load onto your car to use for the initial data logging. This is what N75 will review to determine what changes need to be made to the file to maximize the performance of the tune based on your vehicle's performance. N75 sends their files in RAR format. An RAR file is a compressed archive file that contains one or more files or folders. This file will need to be uncompressed or unzipped. If you have Windows 11 with its most recent update, then you can easily unzip the files without the need for additional software. If you don't have Windows 11, there is free software available to easily unzip the files. Once the files have been unzipped, they need to be placed in the EK1's map folder. Use the included SD card reader to transfer the files into the EK1's map folder. Go back to the car. Turn the car on by pressing the start button twice with your foot off the brake. You do not want to start the car. On the EK1, go to Power Mode, Write ECU, then select the Base Tune file, then OK to begin the process. Allow the process to complete. This process should complete in a matter of minutes. With the base tune file loaded, you will need to log the data. To perform a log, you need to first go into the gauges screen. This screen won't be available until you enter your vehicle's information. On the EK1, click on Select a Car. Select your manufacturer. Find and click on your vehicle model, then click OK. Click OK again. This will then save your vehicle information to the EK1 for the gauge screen. After you enter your vehicle's information, you'll need to select certain gauges that N75 looks at to determine if and what modifications to make to the tune. To select specific gauges for data logging, go to Settings, Gauge Settings, User Mode Item Settings then select the gauges requested by N75. The gauges that you'll need to select are as follows. RPM, boost, relative throttle position, absolute throttle position, ignition timing, air fuel ratio, STFT, LTFT, vehicle speed, wastegate position, and wastegate target. After you've selected the requested gauges, click OK. This will save the gauges in the User Custom View section. Take the car to a safe, open road. Put the car in third or fourth gear and hit the gas hard in that gear all the way to redline. On the EK1, click on Gauge, then User Custom View. This will take you to the data logging screen with the gauges you selected earlier. You will hit the red data log button on the bottom of the screen to begin logging before you begin accelerating. You can do a couple of pulls to ensure you got a good run logged. Once you're finished logging, click on the square at the bottom of the screen. The EK1 will automatically create a file for the log. Once you have your data log files, go back to the computer. Transfer the files from the logs folder on the EK1 SD card to the file uploader on the tuning portal. You can drag and drop the files into the portal. Once the files have been loaded, click on the Upload button to send the files to N75. N75 will evaluate the files and notify you of the results. If everything looks good, you will receive your final tune file packet. Or, if additional tuning is required, you will receive another file to data log again. If everything is good, 
download your tuning file pack into the EK1's Maps folder and upload your new tune to your car. If the latter is the case, then you'll repeat the process of data logging. Don't forget, if you have any questions or issues, feel free to email N75's customer service at cs at n75tuning.com. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.